Senior executives are obsessed with innovation. According to one McKinsey study, 70% of executives said that innovation is a major concern. Why are they so worried? It's simple. Look at the demise of iconic companies like Kodak, Sears, and Toys R Us, and the rise of new disruptors like Amazon, Lyft, and Airbnb. In the face of these seismic shifts, large companies know that they need to keep innovating, but it's not always easy to know how. Some launch their own incubators or venture capital funds. Some embrace design thinking or reconfigure the organization to operate more like a leading startup. But even with all the frenzy, why haven't the results been more impressive? It's becoming clear that nobody has cracked the code of disruptive innovation. In particular, successful innovation requires mastery of three distinct disciplines. Ideation, where you generate new ideas. Incubation, where the new ideas are validated in the market. And scaling where existing resources are reallocated to help the new venture grow. In ideation, firms use a variety of approaches. The open innovation approach seeks creative ideas from outside the firm, opening a company's platform to share intellectual property and develop products. Corporate venture capital develops relationships with startup ecosystems to gain the insight of cutting edge innovators. Design thinking examines the real problems faced by customers and rapidly generates prototypes or potential solutions and employee involvement seeks the insights of a firm's staff through online suggestions, internal contests, hackathons, and other means of gleaning new perspectives in innovation. Incubation sees these new ideas and perspectives validated through market tests. Three methodologies are used in this step. The Lean Startup method takes a firm's hypotheses about new products or services and works backwards from the results you're trying to achieve in order to eliminate wasteful or unnecessary practices. The business model canvas provides a set of building blocks to help identify elements needed to test the original hypothesis. The canvas can then be adjusted as the company grows. And the launch pad encourages rapid prototyping by targeting hyper-specific users, determining their unique pain points, and finding the single functions that would be most meaningful to them. Finally, scaling converts ideas from successful experiments to fully operational businesses. To be successful at scaling, a new venture needs to add customers, capacity, and capability fast enough to maximize the market opportunity. Large, established firms typically have greater access to these assets and capabilities, and, when done correctly, should be able to scale faster than new companies. Options for scaling include acquisition, where a firm acquires other firms to get access to their customers and capabilities, building, where a firm commits significant infrastructure investments to build capacities internally, partnership, where firms combine skills and resources with other established businesses in order to solidify market dominance, and leveraging, where a mature business utilizes and repurposes established customers, capacity, and capabilities to keep an advantage over any future startups or market threats. For large firms, simply acting like a startup is no longer enough to guarantee success. To keep up with disruptive innovation, firms must properly utilize their established resources along with emerging technology and models. Each of the three stages, ideate, incubate, and scale, is distinct, but only when all three are in place is it likely that new ideas will result in new business that enables incumbents to lead disruptive innovation in their markets. To learn more, please read the article, The Three Stages of Disruptive Innovation, in the latest issue of California Management Review, Volume 61, Issue 3, 